Hello, I am Alona Burley from Canada's Drag Race season one. We really do love you, Alona Burley. Now sashay away. Thank you. I might be leaving, but party girls never die! <laughs> How did you become a drag artist? Back in the day, I used to cosplay uh, so I was always dressing up as anime characters, and I always wanted to be like the female characters, but I didn't know if that was like a thing. Um, so I was talking to one of my friends about it, and he was like, okay, you have to watch the show. And I was like, okay, like, what is it? And we sat down and we watched RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, we watched season two, we watched season three, and we watched it probably in like three days, just like back to back to back to back. And uh, it changed my life, really inspired me. I started cosplaying the female characters I like, and then eventually I uh, got sick of being characters and wanted to just do my own thing. And so I started just doing drag. Tell me about the moment where you lip synced against Tainomi uh, to the Avril Lavigne song, because you had a little bit of a moment right before that uh, lip sync, but then really turned it out and sent home, you know, obviously somebody in Toronto who's known as one of the top drag performers. Yeah, absolutely. Well, going into it, Tainomi was my pick to win. She is such a legend, so iconic, such a star. Like, I don't know. I just, I love her so much. And I'm so grateful that her and I were able to get so close. I know it was only four episodes, but we, created such a bond with each other and I just literally love her so much and so I I don't know I think on screen a lot of people are saying that my my little meltdown came off as like super fake um but that's the way I am I'm really over the top and really melodramatic but I yeah I like in reality did not want to do that at all I literally in my head was thinking I'm just gonna walk right off stage as soon as the song starts I'm just gonna leave no one's ever done that that's fierce I'm just gonna leave I was like I don't want to listen to games my friend you know and um when she came up and she hugged me, she whispered in my ear. She's like, if you don't do this lip sync, you're disrespecting me. <laughs> She's like, let's just do it. Let's have fun. I was like, okay, fuck, you're right. And so that's why I kind of just like got together. I was like, let's have fun. And if you watch the lip sync, you can see we're not performing for the cameras. We're not performing for the judges. We were performing for each other. And we're just having fun, interacting with each other and just having a good time. It just felt like we were on stage at the club, you know? And when, when the lip sync ended and they called my name, I stood there and you can see it in the episode. I'm looking around like this. Cause I'm just taking everything in. I'm like, okay, well, it's time to go home. And, and then they said, Shantae, you stay. And I was just like, oh, okay, it's gonna be a double save, fierce. And I looked over at her and then they're like, no, go away, Tainomi. And I was fucking sent me off the deep end. That was still one of the hardest things for me to live through. And even rewatching anything or seeing like memes or fan art or anything of that, it just like brings a tear to my eye. Cause it was such a heavily emotional experience for both of us. Um, which I think at the end of the day just made us so much closer. And I just love her so much. She's always the first person to check on me when I'm having a meltdown. And uh, yeah, I just, I know I have such a sister for life in her. And then now just looking back, watching the show, how do you generally feel about like how you were portrayed your time on the show? I mean, you know, I, I, I definitely know that I'm like an anti-hero. That's been my life story. I actually have that word tattooed on my face right here. Um, so it's like, I knew I was gonna get that edit because that's, I, I'm self-aware, you know? Um, I hate how annoying I came off and I think that the reason why is because I was so in my head and I was really putting up the persona. I was giving you the full Instagram story fantasy for all my confessionals. I was just like, ah, I'm alone to really, blah, 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 like just over the top. Um, and I wish I didn't pull that bullshit. I wish I would have just went and been myself and like not put up the walls. And I think I was just so in my head and freaked out about how is it going to be perceived? I did that as like a defense mechanism and then it just didn't work out in my favor. Um, so I wish I did not do that one. <laughs> Have you had much of a reception or response from like, cause you've talked a lot about representation and uh, on the show and off the show. Have like, in, have you had any kind of reaction from indigenous kids or your, your hometown or anything like that? It's been so amazing. Uh, honestly, like the support is like, I knew that this was going to be impactful, but I didn't know like, how fast, you know? And uh, all my cousins um, back on my reserve, Shkapa, they're all watching the show, they're all living for it. Um, they're always sending me the cutest messages <laughs> about it. And um, yeah, and just hearing from other communities and other kids, like how special and important it's been for them to see me on TV um, and actually hearing it coming from other people has just really like lit me up and made me more passionate to continue speaking on these important conversations that need to be had as far as Indigenous people to spirit people. Because in today's world, I just think right now, there's not enough talk about Indigenous people. Like very often we get swept under the rug. And um, so I'm very happy that I'm in this position now and I will 
talk about this and be proud of being Indigenous and inspire other kids. Most of the contestants on the American Drag Race have been cis, but being non-binary trans, um, I don't know, does that change the experience at all? Um, or have you talked to other con contestants from past episodes about, I don't know, is it a different experience that, that as far as you know from maybe what the other contestants uh, went through? Yeah, I think definitely a different experience. Um, obviously, I signed up to be on a show and get critiqued and get judged, that's part of it. But I didn't realize how much I was going to take those critiques to heart. Because me, my drag isn't just my hobby, you know? It's a piece of me, it's a piece of my soul. And so getting critiqued on something so personal to me um, is hard for me, you know? And every other competition I've done in the past, I've been a sore ass loser about it. And uh, obviously I wasn't gonna pass up Drag Race, so I was like, okay, this one, I'm gonna slap a smile on my face, I'm gonna deal with it. But I think for me, because my drag is such a part of my gender identity, that it made it harder for me to get out of my head, you know? I was so in my head about everything. Like, every time they said, gentlemen, start your engines, I literally, like, felt my eyes roll back into my head. Uh, you know, 2020, I think it's time we stop using heavily gendered language like that. Uh, I understand that's a huge part of the show. Obviously, love the show, love the iconic catchphrases. But it's 2020, you know, the world's changing. I think just updating some language here and there is going to make huge differences for so many people and make them feel more comfortable watching the show or being a part of the show, you know? And that goes for any show. I think it's very important to have a little more neutrality in the gender language. So any final thoughts for the people out there on the state of the world, pop culture, West Coast drag? I, I'm just so grateful that we finally have Canada's Drag Race because the performers in Canada are so talented. They are so sickening and they finally have something huge to work towards now, like the American performers have had for years. Um, so I'm really happy that there's this new opportunity that is, you know, inspiring people to create and elevate their drag and really like step it up and get ready to get themselves on Drag Race, you know? So that's been really cool, just seeing all my friends like killing it lately. And uh, I can't wait to watch season two and see all my friends go through this. <laughs>